So I've been super excited for this talk. We recently launched our community beta, and I think the profile we were all the most excited about was when the city of Chicago made a profile <laughs> on Figma. <laughs> that was just like, wow, what an honor. Oh, um, so you, super excited you. to have you here. And everyone, give it up for Jason. <laughs> hey, thanks, folks. Uh, thanks for your patience as well. Uh, you know, as uh, Jessica said, we're going to try to this uh, little new way of doing a presentation. We'll see if it works. Uh, if not, find me afterwards. I'm the guy with the funny mustache, and I'm happy to talk with you all about Chicago, Chicago symbols, and the work we've done uh, with the city of Chicago. So overall, uh, you know, well, this isn't going to go either, so we'll just put that down. Uh, who is this guy? Uh, my name is Jason Kunish. There's a visual joke. You can see it if you're following along on the screen. It's a <laughs> raccoon saying ish. We'll just do this for you. So, yeah, so that's, that's my talk. Uh, so I'm actually from a little town called Marinette, Wisconsin. So way up north, about an hour north of Green Bay by the 45th parallel. I've been a Midwesterner most of my life, and I've worked in a lot of different spaces. But I got into civic spaces or where kind of technology and uh, design and the skills that we all have can actually impact the social good. Because uh, I worked for uh, President Barack Obama. I was very lucky to work uh, for, woohoo! Hey, democracy, it's a thing we used to have, but can have again, so someday. Uh, but uh, luckily enough, uh, I was able to, to work in this campaign and learn a lot about the intersection of technology and teams. And I learned a lot in particular about uh, how really technology can actually act as a force multiplier to really bring up everybody from across uh, the spectrum of our wonderful communities. So when the city of Chicago was actually going to do some work around uh, their 311 modernization, I wanted to get involved. So what is uh, 311? Uh, that's a system that's actually for uh, basically requesting stuff that isn't an emergency. Okay, so if it's happening right now, that's 911. Uh, if it's happening sometime in the future, that's 311. Someone's killing somebody, 911. You want your trees trimmed, 311. Okay, <laughs> so. Uh, and we have a lot of stuff, but mostly it's physical. So in terms of like internet scale, we're kind of medium small, right? We did like 20 million visits on our main website. We've got about 200 different applications. Most of them are really terrible web apps. Almost all of them are not accessible. We've got about 2.7 million residents, about 300,000 folks with different abilities. And we've got about 40,000 employees and about 180 years of design debt. And so that's a really challenging, <laughs> just saying. Uh, you know, but you know, we also have about a thousand physical locations, right? Parks, schools, um, police stations, libraries. So all this kind of comes together. So that said, you know, when I started, the thing that the mayor said was that basically I hate our website. And so which one? All of them. Okay. So we can we can start working on that. But you know, and I got their point, right? If you look at our website today, it's still the same website when I got hired two years ago because things move really differently in government and how we uh, work to get change is very strange compared to what we do in startup world. But this is terrible. It's basically arranged by the departments and it serves nobody. So you know, there was this whole idea of we're going to modernize 311. We need to hire somebody who actually knows how to research and speak with people and understand what their needs are. So we went out, we interviewed about 1,000 people across the city, and we worked with them in co-design sessions to really design what their future vision of 311 could look like. And while it was really exciting, um, being just me and a bunch of vendors, you know, a lot of that knowledge kind of walked out of the city and wasn't really easily translatable for everybody else. So. That was the past, 311 launched. Last year, uh, Lori Lightfoot, who is the first uh, African-American woman LGBTQ mayor in America, awesome, uh, came in and you know we had a lot of systemic change, uh, but she still hates the website. So no matter who the mayor is, they hate it, right? And they want to get new things done, but we have an $838 million budget hole. It's about $200 million higher than we thought it was. So even though I've been promised my own team now for yeah, like 18 months, and it will come, government is slow, uh, we still needed to figure out a way to work together really fastly, really fast, pardon me. So early on, we had some failures. We went out and we reached out to the civic tech community. We reached out to people like Code for America, and we reached out to volunteers who just wanted to help the city. And we couldn't really engage. They had their own model of change, they had their own toolkits, and they had their own reasons for doing what they were doing. And that all makes sense, but it didn't help us ship real work, right? So they were interested in helping, but they didn't have the means. So what we basically have figured out over two years is really how to ship without a budget or a team. 
And it basically is four things. You find your community, you align work around your shared outcomes, you make participation really frictionless, and then you know, feedback, repetition, and grit are key. Because if there's one thing I've learned in about 10 years of bringing design into spaces where it hasn't really been done before, is you need a lot of grit to make sure it's gonna go, because the first ones are gonna be pretty ugly. So we did our first iteration with Northwestern. We just said, okay, we reached out and we talked to all these people about 311 and we heard a lot of stuff about what they thought. How do people really get city information and services? So we went out with uh, 18 students, four teams from the Siegel Design Institute, and we did basically a three month, et three month ethnographic research study. And we found some great stuff. We found an awesome journey map and it really detailed how people um, found services from within the city, and you know, spoiler, often they didn't find it through us, they found it through their friends and trusted networks because they don't trust the city because Chicago has a reputation. We'll leave it there. Uh, <laughs> but they also produced some great stuff, right? Some physical touch points, things and ways in which we can engage and, and really bring a, a non-digital community into a digital world or just really bring them access to city services and information. And we even got some great digital stuff. This is a prototype they did in Adobe XD. But at the end of the day, what I kept hearing from my colleagues was, you know, I keep thinking about Dear Chicago or some other program. I wish we could do something with that. And so we got some change on one level. If you're gonna bring design into a new space, it's culture, it's process, and then product, right? So culturally, we were seeing people at least be open to the fact that design could have really outsized impact, but we weren't having it land. So we went, we worked with DePaul, another local university, 14 students, three teams, college new media, 10 week sprints, basically three simple projects. How can we go out and figure out how to make the city more inclusive, how to make payments easier for the unbanked, a couple things like that. Did some research, had them do some wonderful prototypes and some crazy AR stuff, had them do, again, some really nice presentations, but they existed in this space that was not transferable. It wasn't tactical enough or connected to our tooling. And the thing that actually happened during this was some students just randomly volunteered to usability test their own 311 app. And so they, they gave us a bunch of results. We actually took that and were able to enter that into our dev cycle and then you know, basically ship improvements based on community feedback. And so that sparked the idea like, there's something going on here. So the next time when we talked to DePaul University, we just said, hey, we're not gonna do it the way we did before. We've got these toolkits that we're building in Figma. We've been an early part of the Figma community beta. And so we had a design system that we'd been developing internally. And so we thought, what if we just made them use this instead of actually giving them whatever they wanna do? And then we said, you know, like all of our projects start really randomly because governments are kind of crazy places in a very beige and kind of normal world. Um, but long story short, like, you know, all of our projects basically start with a crisis. Something happened and we need to ship something else. So we said, why don't we just start the students in the same way? We'll give them the data, we'll let them see how the experiences work today, we'll let them talk to actual users and get feedback, and we don't want a bunch of PDFs as the end result of that. We actually want something that we can use. So we showed them our design system within Figma. We had them actually go out and they basically redesigned our website. So. In 2020, we'll be taking the work uh, that students did in this Figma file and basically roll that back into our design system. We've also opened it up to community feedback and we've been able to actually uh, implement both accessibility and usability improvements to the design system just based on it being in the Figma system, which has been pretty awesome. And then the final thing I'll note is again, if you wanna do whatever with Chicago design stuff, number one, if you wanna help a city in the Midwest that you know, is 838 million in the hole, you got some spare time, or whatever else, you can go to figma.com slash at Chicago, you can get a tattoo if you want of the right Chicago star. Um, but you know, it's a whole other story. Uh, so just wrapping up again, like how do you really ship when you don't really have a lot of budget or team or motion? The big thing is to find your community. In our case, it was educational institutions because they were delivering project-based work that they didn't believe in and they had something that they wanted out of it, which was a grade. We wanted tactical work that actually got done on a timeline. And so there was alignment in what we wanted to do, but uh, for very different reasons. And that's okay. Then finally, it's making participation frictionless by being able to drop them a toolkit and say, 
here's your design system, here's your stencil, here's some templates, here's prior work, and here's like where you're getting into the flow. That made it simple. And then also, because we're two different institutions, being able to work asynchronously through comments and resolution was phenomenal. And again, it's really feedback, repetition, and grit. Like the way that we got better and the way that we actually got to ship work in a case that sounds really goofy, like how'd you do it without budget or anything, it's the first couple really stunk, but we kept communicating with the students, we kept communicating with the professors, and we kept communicating with their own team within the city of Chicago, making sure that we were aligning around needs and shared goals. And I think that's critical whenever you're gonna do something really weird, like ship stuff with university kids. So, that's pretty much everything. The thing I want you to take away from this is really using Figma to push the limits of who is on your team. Right? Because I do think that there's uh, an opportunity in this space, if we think about the conversations from this morning around tools and the way in which the tools we use shape us, yeah, you can say if Figma is kind of like a, you know, Google Docs had a baby with Sketch. No, it's not. There's actually a completely different, sorry, you don't say that, I say that. Uh, but it's not. There's a completely different collaborative paradigm that happens when you enable your teams through Figma, and so I think it can broaden the notion of who a designer is. So with that, I'll shut it, and if you have any questions, I uh, would love to take them. How are you doing? Woo! Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions? Yes. So you can design for the city of Chicago, but then how is it developed? Like, who's doing that work, and how, like... Are there security so, questions there? Yeah, well, there's like developing um, for a city. No, no. So we, it, it's a mix. So actually, uh, if you go to, well, I can give you a URL later. We actually have a Bootstrap theme. We developed a lot of our stuff originally off U.S. Uh, web design system standards, with the idea that that's the there's a federal government effort to make a web design system, and so we thought originally that municipalities would actually draft off that. And originally, all the stuff that you see in Figma was a sketch file from the government that I then imported into Figma and rewrote and read it all the components of. But now we're actually using Bootstrap 4, which is a super old version, but the city is pretty behind times. So we kind of stay with whatever is like the, the real common denominator. And so we have a bunch of interns, some university students. Um, I'll try and pull a couple commits here and there. We've got a couple of vendors. and. The wonderful thing about cities is that you can use policy to direct what you want to have happen. So in our master consulting agreements now, we've said, hey, you're responsible for all this stuff, inclusion, language, accessibility, all this policy. And if you want those things out of the box, you can use all these tools that we have. Or you can go and do all that by hand and fail. So why don't you use the tools? Which is, we're getting there. It's a slow conversation with them. Yeah. Were there others? I saw more hands. Is there a feedback loop between you and the students, and how do you uh, work that into your schedule? I imagine if there are like hundreds of students producing all this work, and uh, you, yeah, you probably have a lot of um, stuff on your plate. Yeah, so a couple things we do is we set up, uh, we'll do some kind of distribution list or some kind of like administrivia stuff where I'll stop in their classes every so often. Right? And then uh, they can basically hit us up in Slack. We have a Slack channel for the design system. They can email me. Typically, they don't because they freak out. They're like, oh, you're the designer. I don't know if I should email you. And I'm like, OK. And we just give them a big packet. And honestly, the big packet, now that we've done it multiple times, is like, hey, here's all these links. Here's how we use GitHub. Here's how we use Figma. Here's how all this stuff is there. And it's cut down on a lot of the communication. How about one more? One more? No more. All right. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll just say one last thing real quick. Uh, we're, we actually have a file out there. If you want to remix your own version of the Chicago logo with whatever your community means to you, uh, that file is available in the beta as part of the remix uh, setup. So we'd love to see what you'd want to come up with. And again, if you want to do anything with Chicago and design, please find me. We'd love to chat. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you so much.